As a performer, our mission is always to bring out the character, the very distinctive mood of every piece of music. It's what makes Bach sound totally different from Mozart, sound totally different from today's composers. As a flutist, I think very much about the sort of trajectory emotionally that the composer takes you on. What makes it a lot of fun and just exciting is that you're not only going on this journey, but you're trying to bring the audience along with you. Dolce suono means sweet sound in Italian, and I had been uh, reading and writing um, a paper um, that I presented and published on Dante in the music of the Divine Comedy. So there's a lot of um, anti-music and cacophony and inferno, and then the music gradually becomes more beautiful. And so when I was thinking about what to name this, this concert series, it just came to me that I wanted to call it Dolce suono. American music is really interesting if you look at the whole trajectory of classical music history, say from the medieval period through today, because it's a lot newer. When colonists came here, they very much brought the music of their European countries. And only in the late 19th to 20th century did American composers seek to create a distinctively American sound. And I think an element that comes out in Dolce Suono's program tonight is the fact that not only do we have a myriad of styles in American music and influence of indigenous American forms like jazz and Broadway, but you also get the importance of media on American music's development through radio, television, and film, especially since a lot of the composers on tonight's program have written film scores.
moment for American music. In the late 19th century, when the Czech composer Antonín Dvořák came to the United States and then composed his Symphony No. 9 from the New World and other music that was inspired by America, um, he used some African-American spirituals in his music. It actually caused a generation of American composers to ask what is American about our music and to, to try to create uh, classical art music that was distinctively American. In the Copland duo for flute and piano, which I'll perform with Jeremy Gill, you'll definitely hear a very American sound. It's, it's a late work for Copland, written in 1971, but it harkens back to Copland's distinctively American style that he used in Appalachian Spring and Rodeo and other famous pieces. There's an openness to the melodies, a sort of sparseness, uh, melodically and harmonically that's very characteristic and the solo flute opening of the piece has a lot of open sounding intervals that's also very characteristic of the style.